In this video, I'm going to show you how to recreate the look of candlelight using a speed light. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now, today I'm going to show you how to take a candlelit portrait using a lantern and Sophie, our model, who will be coming into the studio very soon. But I'm not going to be using candles in this tutorial at all, because despite what you've seen in the Hollywood movies, Candles are actually pretty dim in brightness and for still photography, unless you want to shoot at really high ISO or very long shutter speed, you need a brighter source of light. And today our bright source of light is going to be a speed light. So I'm going to show you how to convert this speed light into simulated candle light. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to angle up the flash and then we're going to have a lantern above it. Now I've got my, my lantern here, it's all ready to go and this is just a, an ordinary garden lantern. In fact it's been out in the garden all winter long and it, it kind of looks like it as well, it's, it's seen better days. But that's all part of the beauty of this picture. However I have modified the bottom of my lantern quite considerably. I've drilled a load of holes in the bottom and the holes are really there so the light can come through. So here's the plan. We have the lantern above the flash, the flash goes off, the light comes through the holes, and the whole light comes out through the lantern and lights Sophie as if it was candlelight. That's the theory. Let's put the shoot together and make it happen. Okay, so I'm joined in the studio by Sophie. Say hello to, well, Adorama TV, Sophie. Hello. And she can't wait to have her picture taken, can you? Yeah, see, that's perfect. That's exactly the enthusiasm I'm looking for. So what we're going to do is we've set the flash up. It's on a stand and we're just going to light it from below and get the light to go through those holes and we'll see how it works. Now, I'm using my Canon 60D and my 24-105 lens and I'm using the 60D because the pop-up flash will act as a master and then the other flash will act as a slave and that should mean I can fire it remotely. That's the idea. Well, let's see how the picture actually looks. Okay, so Sophie, if you want to just hang that over the top, that's perfect. Okay, so, and then if you want to bring your, your face in nice and close, brilliant. Here we go. One, two, three, boom. Okay, so, as we can see from that picture, that is not working too well at all. The flash is bouncing off the bottom of the lantern, and it's not quite the, the look we're going for. So we need to modify things, and I'm going to modify it by using this. This is a very, very high-tech piece of equipment that is custom designed for my own personal requirements. Yeah, it's a bit of black cardboard with a bit of sellotape on, and that's going to go over the top of the flash and create a little light tunnel for the light to go through. I'll just put it on now. Okay, so that fits neatly over the flash and it means that the light won't stray off to the sides and all of the light will channel up through the bottom of the lantern. Now we're going to get Sophie to rest the lantern actually on the cardboard itself. Now if you want to try something more sophisticated than just a, another bit of cardboard, have a look at something like the Rogue flash benders, which can actually shape and mould themselves around and create the perfect shape for your flash gun. Okay, so we're ready to go. So Sophie, if you want to rest that on the top, that's it, we'll make sure it's all nice and centred in, perfect. And then it's exactly as before, bring your head in nice and close. Here we go. Bang. Okay, and the difference is absolutely astonishing. Much more dramatic lighting, much more realistic. It really does look like the, uh, the lantern is actually lit and is lighting Sophie's face. For me, the problem is the colour. The colour is looking a little bit too white. It's just a little bit too flash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm up the colour scheme of the light coming out of the lantern. And I'm going to do it by using some gels. So for the gels, I'm going to use the Roscoe gel set. Now these are brilliant. I've had these, as you can probably tell by the state of my pack, for a very long time. They just go on and on and on. And it's one of those things that flash photographers using speed lights really should own. Of course, you can get these from the Adorama store. Have a little look on there and you'll find a selection of different kits. But I highly recommend these and I use them all the time. 
And in the way I'm going to use it is just with a little bit of blue tack because the Canon 580 EX2 flash gun doesn't come with a filter holder, but blue tack will work just fine. And we'll pop a little bit of blue tack on either side of the flash gun and attach the gel. And then we'll put the tube back on top. So as you put the tube on, just make sure you don't move the gel off the top, otherwise, of course, the effect is somewhat ruined. Okay, so everything's in place. Let's take this shot a third time, and hopefully this should work perfectly. Okay, that's it. Get that on the top. I'll we'll centre that up so the light goes through the holes, and in we come. Let's have a little look. Brilliant. Uh, Sophie, can I get you just to come down slightly lower so your head's... That's it. Perfect. And look right into the lantern. Boom. Okay. Can you look slightly up in the air? That's it. Perfect. And one more shot. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, and as you can see, this time it worked extremely well. Now we have some lovely warm light coming out of that lantern, and it really does give the effect of candlelight. All we need to do now is to perfect the image by taking this photograph into Photoshop, and we'll do a few changes there, and we're going to do that right now. So because I shoot everything in RAW, of course, when I open my image, I end up here in Adobe Camera RAW that comes with Photoshop CS6. Now, this is the picture as it came off the camera, and the lighting off the camera is okay, but it could have been a little bit brighter. The flash was on full power. There was no more power to, got, to be got out of the flash, but I could have increased my ISO. I could have opened up my aperture. That I could have drilled more holes in the bottom of the lantern. Isn't hindsight a wonderful thing? But not to worry, we're close enough that we can work this image and get exactly what I want. What I want is perhaps just a little general increase in the exposure, and that's one of the beauties of RAW. You can do just that. I think we'll also have a general increase in contrast as well, just to, to really give this a little bit of an edge. I'm also going to come down to the clarity, and I'm not going to increase the clarity because that's going to cause the wrong effect for a portrait. I'm actually going to decrease it because that adds a nice soft glow, and we'll emphasize that glow even more when we go back into Photoshop in just a moment. So really, I'm happy with the lantern. There's a couple of bits I'm less happy with. I could do with a little bit more light on Sophie's face. I could do with a little bit less light on her arm. And I could do with a little bit less light coming through that star on the lantern as well. We can see the base of the tube, but I'll deal with that inside of Photoshop in just a minute. Okay, so how are we going to do the adjustments? Well, because those are local things we want to change, I'm going to use a local adjustment brush. So I'm going to get the adjustment brush, and I'm going to increase my exposure. Let's go about one and a half stops, something like that. And we'll just increase the size of the brush. And we'll just paint a little bit more light onto Sophie's face. That looks really good. And whilst we're here as well, we'll just come in and add a little bit more contrast onto her face too. Okay, so that gets me where I want to be with the exposure on the face, but it's definitely now looking very, very bright on her arm. So going back to my list here, I'm going to click on the New Adjustment Brush button to make a new adjustment brush. And I'm just going to click on the minus exposure. And clicking on the actual minus button here in Adobe Camera Raw means that it resets all of the other sliders, meaning you only have to change one thing. So I didn't have to move anything else, which is a handy shortcut to know. And we're just going to paint a little bit less exposure just there on her arm. And in fact, we can probably come down even further. Yeah, there we go. That kind of gets pretty good there. Now, with that star area at the top, I don't really want to um, affect that too much. Let's just zoom in so we can have a, a little look there. Uh, I really only want to affect that star area and not the surrounding pixels. And that's just a highlight, really. So let's just change the highlights. We'll make a new brush. And then I'll just change the highlights. And we'll just put a little bit less in those highlights. And you can see how that just tweaks up quite nicely. And we'll put it about there. We can also change the temperature for that area just to put a, a tiny bit more warmth into what would have been quite a grey spot, if not. OK, so I'm happy with that. That all looks good. So I'm going to click on the Open Image button. We'll leave RAW behind and return into Photoshop. Now, really, in Photoshop, there's only a couple of things to do. First one is to remove the, the tube, which is still quite obvious in the picture. And second, we'll increase the glowing effect. So removing the tube, well, first of all, I want to make sure that the background is black and I can see a little bit of color creeping through. So let's go up to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. 
And here on levels, I'm just going to get the black slider and just move that in until everything goes black. I can check if I want to. I can hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac and click on that little black slider in levels. And I can see where everything dips down to pure deep black. I've also got a, a little bit of an edge showing and we've lost a tiny bit of Sophie's sleeve. So let's just get the clone tool and remove those. We'll just sample her sleeve and rebuild underneath like that. I think we can go for a harder brush. So we'll just kind of build that back in. Yeah, there we go. And we'll remove anything underneath and that weird line like so. So just a few clicks just to remove those areas and tidy that up. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Last thing is that nice glowing effect. And this is so simple, but it's something I do on so many portraits because it's so flattering. And that is to make a copy of the layer. So let's go to layer, duplicate layer, and click OK. And then on that duplicated layer, I'm going to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. This adds a lovely soft glow. At least it does if you push it up very high. So around about 50 pixels is where I want to be. Something like that and click OK. Then to blend that all together, simply go to the layer blending mode and change it from normal to soft light. And soft light just gives that glow. I mean, look, look at that. It just instantly gives a beautiful glow. It also increases the contrast. So if that is a little heavy, just come to the opacity and drop the opacity down to about half what it was before. And that just gives me the right balance between a slightly crisp image and one that just has a beautiful warm candle lit glow. So there you go. There's how you can recreate candlelight using a speed light. Now, don't forget, if you want to find out more about Adorama TV, then you need to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.